Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me start by thanking the government of China and the Executive Secretary of the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification for their very kind invitation for me to speak to you today. I regret that I cannot be with you in orders to engage in person and particularly on this roundtable on land degradation as a challenge to development, prosperity and peace. On the 19th of September 2016, global leaders approved the New York Declaration on Refugees and Migrants. The very first paragraph of the declaration highlights that people move, and I quote, in response to the adverse effects of climate change, natural disasters, some of which may be linked to climate change, or other environmental factors, end of quote. Now this attests to the growing recognition of the importance of environmental drivers of migration, including slow onset drivers such as land degradation, desertification, and soil erosion. In fact, these slow onset changes often undermine the sustainability of local livelihoods, especially those linked to the primary sector of the economy, such as agriculture, farming, livestock, forestry, and fishery, pushing people to leave their communities. Land degradation, desertification, and soil erosion can also cause increases in both food insecurity and the risk of health-related crisis, and they can hinder the enjoyment of the right to water, sanitation, food, housing, health, and self-determination, all of which can force people to leave their homes in search of a, a livelihood. In the context of climate change, the influence of these environmental drivers is increasing. How precisely they drive migration depends heavily on their interaction with other social, political, economic, and demographic drivers. But the fundamental linkage is clear. I recently learned with great interest that some of you are involved in the regional 3S initiative aimed at promoting practical solutions to address the environmental drivers of migration. Several other programs and projects at the regional level also aim at enhancing the capacity of developing countries to effectively manage the impacts of climatic and environmental stresses on human mobility. This is encouraging because migration in most parts of the world takes place within the same region. And I hope these initiatives can help us bridge the remaining knowledge gaps on the relationship between climate change, environmental change, and migration. I greatly look forward to hearing about the migration-related deliberations of this Conference of the Parties, and I would encourage you to remain engaged as the membership of the United Nations moves forward with its commitment to create, by the end of next year, a global compact for safe, orderly, and regular migration. I thank you very much for your kind attention.